Another incredibly powerful and amazingly useful aspect of motion analysis is the capability to combine your motion analysis with optimization. So we've gone through and we've run a motion analysis on our uh, excavator here, and we've done an analysis on uh, some parts and taken a look at that. But let's take a look at uh, running an optimization with this. So one of the more difficult aspects of an optimization is making sure you get your loads right. And loads are everything when we're talking about an optimization because the optimization uh, algorithm is going to go through and it's going to determine the load path through your geometry and uh, that's going to determine the optimized shape. So making sure you get the loads right is, is a critical aspect of of optimization and it can be especially difficult in a situation like this where we know that the loads are going to be continually changing as these arms move and this bucket moves. So let's find a part on here that we want to optimize and I think the best one to take a look at are, are these these two little guys right here. Um, and uh, what we can do is go through and create a design space from this. And once we have a design space, um, we're going to run an optimization on it. And like I said, one of the trickiest parts is getting the loads right. So making sure that the loads are correct would be very, very difficult on this, but it's actually incredibly simple with motion. Since we run the motion analysis first and then indicate how we want to go about doing an optimization, it will pull the uh, Optistruct, the engine behind the uh, optimization, will pull the loads from the motion analysis and string them together so we not only get an optimization based on loads that we don't know, but we're essentially getting an optimization out of a dynamic system because it will take a look at all of the loads through all of the different uh, stages of this analysis. Now I've got this one set here and then we'll go through how to do a design space, but I just want to show you how I, uh, how I went about doing this. So I'm going to uh, control select these. I'm going to click I for isolate. And you'll notice I, I've separated this, but this is still part of a uh, it's still part of the bucket. So I'm going to show you a little trick here uh, that I use a lot of times to isolate a, uh, a design space, uh, and it's actually the push pull. And we know that if I come here to the push pull, and I can I can drag and I can in, uh, increase that or shrink that. Let me put it back to zero, so it uh, so it goes. Uh, but what a lot of people don't know is if you hold the shift key down, and you do the push pull. What it actually does is it creates a new part out of it. So you see now this is a new part and it's it's a way of, of creating a new part from it. But let me undo that. A little trick here is if I go to push pull and I grab that and I hold the shift key down and I extrude down through the part and then I allow the snap to grab the other end and then right click to come out of here, it has eliminated the original part and the new part that I've created automatically by holding the shift key down is the exact same size as the original part and I've effectively separated that from, from the bucket. So now I want to take this and I'm just, I'll click that, I'm gonna click H for, for hide and uh, I wanna go through and I wanna create a design space from this. And we know from our experience uh, with optimization that uh, a design space should be a nice big bulky block of material. Um, and I don't have, I don't, I don't need like this little dip in here. I want to find the true uh, load path through here. The only thing, what I want to maintain, I'll, I'll keep these radii on here, but I absolutely want to maintain that, uh, that, that, that section right there because that's what's going to mount to the bucket. But if I come here and uh, if I click on, double click on this, and then click, double click one more time, it puts me into the sketching mode on that face. And if I click create new part and then click this convert lines, what it will do is it will create essentially a plane, a surface that is the exact uh, outline of that. And now if I take that surface and I drag it through to the edge of that and right click, I now have a brand new plane here that are a brand new part that I can uh, I can work with and actually I 
went a little bit too far. Okay, so now I, I want to remain in the sketching mode here because what I'm going to do before I leave the sketching mode is I'm going to come here to lines. And if I grab right at kind of that tangent right there and draw a line right to say that tangent right there, and then right click and then right click again, you see now I have uh, a part that doesn't have that little divot in it, which is what I want. So let me turn off that original uh, bucket there and we'll turn that off there. Uh, and then I wanna, I'm gonna drag that, but before I do that, what I want to do is come here to simplify and I'm gonna come to imprints and I'm just gonna remove these right here. Uh, so using that create new part and the transfer uh, lines as a way of, of creating a brand new a brand new part there uh, that is the same as the other but allows you to sketch and create a kind of a, a an extra an extra portion to it. I couldn't sketch on that original one because there was nothing there. So as long as I remain in that sketch mode, uh, it will allow me to to sketch additional things. Now I need to turn this back on. Nope, not that one. This one right there, because what I'll do is now I'll drag this. Oops, let me come into push pull and I'll drag this to right there. And now turn that off. You see, we've got that nice block there. And now if I come to push pull and drag these holes through there, I've got my nice design space set up and we'll move that in into a design space now. Uh, we'll of course partition it first. Now this is, this is just an example of how to go about creating a design space on this. Obviously, when you're creating your design spaces on whatever part, uh, every design space is going to be created uh, a little bit or drastically differently. Uh, these are just some tools that I've used uh, over the years uh, that, that have worked well for me to create uh, good design spaces. Now with this design space uh, in, uh, or with this ready for a design space, uh, I do need to partition areas off. Uh, partition tool, as we discussed in the optimization, is a way of preserving features. I uh, don't want to be in meters. Let me come here to, uh, we'll come here to millimeters. So three millimeters. Let's make this, uh, we'll make that five millimeters thick. And remember, the point of this is just to, uh, yeah, five millimeters is probably not enough, is just to preserve these cylinders. 12.5, uh, we'll make it a, yeah, 13, that's good. Make them nice and thick there. Um, and then the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure I preserve this cross section here that's going to mount to the bucket. And the uh, partition doesn't necessarily just have to work on, uh, on holes. I can also do faces with it as well. So I'll grab these. And now you see we get, uh, we get that preserved as, as well. So now I've got that and if I come down here and uh, turn on my bucket, oops, that's not it. It was just, you know what, we'll just do this, click all. Now I've got that, that region there preserved so it will mount securely to the bucket and I'll have my, uh, my uh, part ready to go. So now uh, let's undo that, edit undo. So I've just got this and now I right click on this. I'm going to select design space and we'll be all set there. Uh, the last thing I'm going to want to do for this design space uh, is I'm going to come back here to my structure and I'm going to come to shape controls and I'm going to put an extrusion shape control on this running in that direction. And if you remember from our discussion during the optimization portion, the extrusion shape control is going to guarantee that this has the same cross section going all the way through, which will allow me to uh, allow me to to cut it out uh, when I want to create it, and that just guarantees I get that uh, that same cross section going through. I could try other ones, single draw, split draw, but uh, I'm going to go with the extrusion for right now. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'll actually just probably take and and duplicate this. Uh, and, and you know what, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so let me come here, not that one, that one right there. And so if I come here and I right click to get out of here and I'm gonna do a uh, window select and I'm gonna click, uh, oops. Didn't want to grab that and we'll, we'll just do, there we go. 
come around here. We'll do the control. Oh, I'm in, I'm in some function, aren't I? There we go. Grab that, control that, control this, and control this. And now right click and click copy and right click and click paste. It's going to create that. And now I'm just going to come and uh, I need to move this to the exact location of, of this over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is where I'm moving relative. If I hold my shift key down, I can move that relative, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, arrows to move. I can move that to that point right there. And now if I hold and I grab that point and I snap it to that exact point right there, I can get it in the exact location I want. Uh, but unfortunately, let me bring that back here. I managed to do it to a point that doesn't exist on there because I haven't done that trimming. So let me find a different one. So hold my shift key down and we'll uh, move it to right here. That'll work. I could also do the center of the hole. In fact, that may even be a better, better choice. We'll do the center of the hole there. And now if I grab that, and snap, I can snap it right to the center of that hole there. And now it's in the exact position that I, uh, I want it to be. And uh, I've got both of my design spaces uh, all set up. So uh, maybe, you know, no, I missed it just by a little bit. Sometimes this can be a little tricky, but we always have our friendly undo here. Um, so I probably grabbed the center wrong or something like that. So let's uh, come back here to move. Hold the shift key down. We'll come to that right there. That I know is on the other one. Yeah, it's definitely there. And we'll grab that point and move it to right there. And now, okay, perfect. Now we're perfect there. And that uh, allows me to have that. So now I've got my two design spaces. Uh, all I need to do is make sure to come here to my shape controls and I'll uh, put the uh, extrusion on that as well. And now I've got my two design spaces. <clears throat> and I just get rid of the original uh, the original aspects of this. No, that's not it. Get rid of this. Delete. And get rid of this. Beautiful. And then finally, that right there and delete that. Good. And now we're uh, now we're good to go. Now, because I went through and deleted the original geometry, we, of course, lost our uh, connections, our joints. So I need to come back here to my joints and just recreate those. So this will take just a second. To, there we go. And I'll put that in there and put that in there and now right click from there. Now, uh, oops, missed that joint over there. So let me come back to here and we'll, oh, you know what, there we go. I think I had something selected. Joints, there we go. And grab not that one. Sometimes getting the right uh, the right thing can be a little bit tricky. There we go, right through there, perfect. Okay, so now we're good to go there. Okay, so we need to run our motion analysis, but there's one more thing we need to do, and it's a little bit of a trick here. Um, and that is, since we have our, our design space and our non-design space, uh, but these are now separate from from the bucket. If I were to run the analysis, there's nothing holding them together. Uh, so we're going to actually have to joint them together. And the way that we're going to go about doing that, uh, oops, let me get out of this. I had my pin selected. Okay, good. So now it's got this. So you can see it identifies where the non-design space and the design space attach and where the non-design space and the bucket attach. If I select these, but then come over here and lock them, 
it creates a, a translational joint between them, but then locks it in place, and that's going to hold those together. So it's almost as if I've kind of glued them together. So a little trick that will help you uh, attach your non-design space and your design space. Uh, and I'll need to do that over here. I accidentally already created that one, but this is fine. So I can grab that and lock that. And that one's a cylindrical. Uh, it really doesn't even matter what uh, what it defines them as. You just got to make sure you don't grab that pin. There we go. And lock that. And that's going to hold. That's going to hold all of that together. Uh, Oops, and I need to do the ones down here as well. So I'll grab, uh, not the pin, not the pin. It keeps wanting to grab the pin. Sometimes a little tricky to grab. There we go. Got it. Lock and grab this and lock that. Good. And now my design space and non-design space and the non-design space and the bucket will all be locked together. And I can come through here and run the motion analysis. So let's quickly just come up here. Uh, and we'll set this to uh, when finished. So it just allows it to speed it up a little bit. Uh, four seconds, I'm doing 30 hertz. That should be fine for right now. Uh, ultimately, when you do this, you may want to bump this up. Uh, it really depends on how many uh, how many load steps or how many uh, uh, cycles you want in your in your optimization when you run the uh, when you run the optimization. But okay, so now I can just come here and run this. Okay, so my motion analysis is now done. I uh, just need to do a quick check on that, make sure everything worked fine. You can see by putting those uh, those lock joints in there, it uh, is attached to everything properly. You can see our design spaces are moving along nicely there and, uh, and everything's fine. So our motion analysis is done. And do recall that you do have to have a motion analysis completed to be able to run the optimization, just like we did with the analysis. And even if you ran an optimization, I'm sorry, a motion analysis initially, uh, before you started setting up your design space, the second you start manipulating geometry and then the joints get uh, deleted, uh, all of that information about the motion analysis is lost. So you will need to run another one again. Um, and when you put in those additional lock joints and stuff, it may take a little bit longer, but uh, it wasn't bad. So with the motion analysis complete, I now just come here to optimize part. It's going to say what uh, space, design space do I want to optimize. Uh, I can click one or the other. Unfortunately, I can't click both of them. So we'll optimize one. And actually, I don't really need to because the, uh, the optimization should be exactly the same for both of them. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, but I can run an optimization on each of them and get them, uh, or I can just run it on one and copy it over. Uh, but uh, now that I've got my design or my setup here, determine whether I want the maximize stiffness or minimize mass. Uh, you can do all 185 time samples. That will take some time. Uh, what often we'll do with the optimization is just use the five peak loads per connection. Uh, that will limit it to, uh, in this case, what I've got uh, one, two connections, so about 10 loads. Uh, and the, I don't know whether it'll count those joints in there because they're locked, but uh, 10 loads, which will speed it up a bit. Uh, and other than that, it's exactly the same as the, um, as the optimization that we ran uh, previously, setting it up the normal way. Uh, I just click the run optimization and it will start uh, start running the optimization. And we'll take a look at that when that's completed. So it's all set and running there. So after a little bit of a wait, we're done. And we can just come up here, click the little uh, flag, and see the results. And we can see that probably needs a little bit more material added in there so we can get an idea of what we're looking at. And now we can see that it, uh, there's a little bit more thorough of a of a part there. Uh, so let's get out of this and then we'll just isolate that and we can go about then designing uh, a part from this. So, you know, we'd probably want to carry that, that curve around there. It's not going to do a lot of point just sticking out there and uh, carry this around. But we, you can see we're, uh, we're getting a good, uh, a good design, a uh, good idea of a better design than, than what we had before. Um, and if you go back and take a look at the uh, the previous optimization uh, video, as well as the polynerbs, you can get an idea of how we can 
directly here within Inspire, go ahead and uh, and create the uh, the geometry for this, um, or create some rough geometry that we can then bring into a CAD system. So that's pretty much uh, the direction that we want to head when we do an optimization. Uh, then we take and copy this to the other side, and uh, we can see where we're at. So that uh, that wraps up the uh, the optimization. Uh, great tool within uh, within the motion uh, capabilities. Uh, remember that the creation of every design space is going to be a little bit different. These were some general ideas uh, of how I'd go about doing with this one, and they'd apply to other things. And then there's other uh, other aspects that that would not apply. So uh, just work on the design spaces, work on optimization, and the more you do, the better you become at it. Uh, so thanks for watching and we'll move on to whatever the next video may be.